Hello, and welcome to the 505 tutorial for Operation Screed Overview. In this tutorial, we will review the 505's Operation Screeds. The features and options available through the Operation Screeds are used to run the turbine, so becoming familiar with them will allow you to use the 505 to make the correct adjustments to turbine operation quickly. In addition, the built-in HMI screens provide a great deal of information about the current operating status of the turbine. Knowing where this information is located will allow for more efficient turbine and plant operation. To operate the turbine, you must be logged in to the operator, service, or configure user level. For more information on this, reference the Changing User Levels tutorial. The operation screens are available from the controller's home screen. Different operation screens are available for different 505 configurations. Your 505's configuration may not match the one used to create this tutorial, so do not be alarmed if the screens available to you differ in appearance. To view an operation screen, you can either use the navigation cross keys to highlight the applicable button. For this demonstration, we'll choose Overview, then press Enter, or Press the numeric key on the front panel of the unit that corresponds to the number identified on the desired button. For this demonstration, we'll press 1 to choose Overview. Like all the operation screens, the Overview screen adapts to each 505's particular configuration so that it displays all configured options. During normal run operation, this screen provides all the primary turbine parameter values and operational status. Use the navigation cross keys to highlight different controllers. Then use the adjust keys to change their set points. The menu bar along the bottom of the screen provides you with access to more operations for the available controllers, such as speed and cascade. To access these additional options, press the black function key below the desired option. Pressing the function key below more shows additional options you can select. These screens allow typical operational commands related to the control loop selected, such as directly entering a set point or enabling or disabling a controller. Remember, you can return to the main or home screen from any of the operation screens by simply pressing the home button. The speed control screen provides all details related to the turbine when operating in speed control or generator load control. The menu bar allows access to a number of commands related to speed control, such as access to entered speed or load, remote set point, valve limiter, overspeed test, and dynamics settings. The valve demand screen shows all the options that can affect your configured 505's final output demand to the valve. Specifically, it shows us what control or ramp is controlling the valve demand output. The Low Signal Select, or LSS, bus will output the lowest value seen at its inputs. The Valve Logic Box represents options that may be used to adjust this value, such as valve linearization or pressure compensation, prior to output to the HP valve. During normal operation, the valve limiter setting is at 100% and not limited. Typically, the only time this parameter is adjusted is during a start sequence or to troubleshoot system dynamics problems. The menu bar provides access to the valve limiter set point and, if configured for use, the manual valve demand. The controllers screen shows all controllers that have been configured for the unit. This screen provides similar information as the overview screen, but in a graphical gauge view. It also provides control PID information, which is useful for monitoring when the 505 is near control transition points. The menu bar provides you with access to typical operational commands related to the control loops, such as directly entering a set point or enabling or disabling a controller. Pressing more shows additional control loops if they are configured. Pressing more again allows you to access the valve limiter and overspeed test options. The cascade control screen is available when the unit is configured for cascade control. This screen provides details related to the cascade control loop. The cascade control output determines the set point for the speed control, which allows the 505 to vary the speed control set point as it relates to another process variable selected by the user. 
The commands button on the menu bar provides access to a number of other screens that are related to cascade control, such as directly entering a set point, access to the valve limiter, or adjusting cascade control dynamic settings. The auxiliary control screen is available when the unit is configured for auxiliary control. This screen provides details related to the auxiliary control loop. The auxiliary control output goes to the LSS bus and can directly affect the HP valve demand output. This can be configured as a limiter or a controller. If it is a limiter, it will always be enabled so it can provide protection related to the process variable being used for this function. When configured as a controller, it will disable the speed PID whenever it is enabled. The menu bar provides access to commands related to auxiliary control, such as enabling the controller, directly entering a set point, accessing the valve limiter, or adjusting auxiliary control dynamic settings. If configured, the Auxiliary 2 control screen is identical to the Auxiliary control screen, with the exception that it can only be used as a limiter. Finally, to access the Start Curve screen, select the Startup Curve button on the home screen. The Start Curve screen provides information relating to the unit startup. The menu bar provides access to commands such as Limiter Control, Entering a Set Point, and Dynamics. You now know the features and options available through the operation screens. Please be sure to view the other tutorials for more information.